Hi friends, if we are constructing any type of power source, we are necessarily confronted with the heating of the power element. In electronics, we can't escape heating at all. Any component has a resistance, and when an electric current passes through the resistance, heat is released, whether it's a conventional resistor or an ultra-modern processor, and the more current, the more heating. Heating leads to a decrease in the efficiency of the device and deterioration of all characteristics. Of course, heat should be removed in the most effective way. In the modern world, there are several ways of fighting against heating. Passive and active cooling are their hybrid. Passive cooling is a conventional radiator. Cooling here occurs naturally. In active systems, fans are used to forcibly remove heat through directed flow of cold air or blowing out warm air. The third method is superconductors. It's a material that has zero resistance and therefore the current will not cause heating. But the problem is that the substance passes into a state of superconductivity at very low temperatures, close to absolute zero or minus 273 degrees Celsius. Now, scientists have achieved great breakthroughs in the area and may soon be appearing new materials that will be in a state of superconductivity at room temperature. The introduction of such materials into industry will be the beginning of a new era. Now, let's go to the point. The cooling fan in the active cooling system makes noise and takes some energy, so it is desirable that it turned on only when necessary. It must blow out warm air and then turn off again. For this purpose, the systems of thermal switches and temperature controllers are used. The simplest and most accessible options we will consider today. The first circuit is built on a single transistor. The temperature sensor is a thermistor with a negative temperature coefficient or NTC, that is, when it is heated, it reduces initial resistance. I assembled all the circuits on small printed circuit board. Due to the small number of components used, you can do without a board, but when dealing with more complex circuits, you can't do without a PCB, and our constant sponsor GLC PCB will help you in this difficult matter. This is a huge factory specialized in the creation of printed circuit boards of any complexity and the highest quality with prices starting from $2 for 10 pieces. Very soon, we will show you all the production process in detail. The link to GLCPCB will be found in the description under the video. Together with a variable resistor, it forms a voltage divider. By changing the resistance of these resistors, we can shift the operating point in one direction or another. One of our resistors reduces its resistance when heated. When the resistance becomes smaller, the transistor will become more opened. By rotating the variable resistor, we can change the bias voltage, thereby forcing the transistor to work when we need it. Let it be 100 degrees Celsius. Heat the thermistor up to 100 degrees. Instead of a fan, I connected a small light bulb for clarity. Slowly rotate the slider of the variable resistor and stop abruptly when the lamp lights up. We are waiting for the temperature sensor to cool down and the lamp goes out. Then we again heat the temperature sensor to 100 degrees to make sure the correct setting. The circuit will look like this in case of using a thermistor with a positive temperature coefficient. For the most accurate tuning, I highly recommend using multi-turn trimmer resistors. Everything seemed to be good. The circuit is simple and quite working. But where to take a thermal sensor?
The required thermistor can be found on the control board in the laptop battery. Several specimens that I checked had an initial resistance at room temperature of about 10 kilo ohm. In front of you is germanium diodes. They are many, many years old. The germanium technology has remained in the past because of significant shortcomings and high costs. One of these drawbacks is strong temperature dependence. By connecting the germanium diode to an ohmmeter, we see the initial resistance at room temperature. The temperature of our body is enough that the resistance of the crystal starts to drop sharply. But this drawback can be used in our next circuit, where the thermistor is replaced by germanium diodes. Several parallel connected diodes will allow for more extensive monitoring of the heated area, but you can also use only one diode. The principle of operation of the circuit doesn't differ from the previous. If there are no such diodes, it doesn't matter. I am sure that many have low-power germanium transistors. They can also be used as a thermal sensor. The following circuit is very simple and can manage quite powerful fans due to the use of a powerful field effect transistor. The range of supply voltages depends solely on the field effect transistor used, but you shouldn't abuse this moment as for the most fats the average admitted gate voltage is about 12 volts. The minimum voltage required to operate the circuit is from 4 to 6 volts. It must be sufficient to operate the FET. This video has come to an end. Links to buy components and ready-made thermostats you will find in the description. There also will be a link to the archive with all the circuits and printed circuit boards. On this, I say goodbye. Until new meetings. With you, as always, was Kaisan TV.